Hello and welcome for another day. Welcome to another day uh, for our Introduction to Graduate Studies course. I have to make one correction from yesterday's meeting. I misspoke. I used simply a wrong word. Uh, I was speaking about a book that has two authors or two editors um, and I said that you only alphabetize the first author Oh, I wanted to say you, uh, you, you, you list the last name of the first author first, and then the first name. So last name, comma first name, and then you use first name, last name for the second or all subsequent authors. And I misspoke when I said um, I used the word italicize, but I wanted to say alphabetize. Uh, so the reason why you use uh, the last name first is because you alphabetize. Um, under the first author's last name. And that's why you list the first author's last name first. So that is just a, a correction. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so for today, I want to uh, uh, talk a little bit again about the library catalog. As you may notice, I'm actually coming back to some things that I repeated before uh, or but that I said before. I like to um, have a cyclic approach to uh, learning because I can review something we learned before and then I can add on new things and that way we actually remember better because if we only hear things once, uh, it may be difficult to actually remember. Anyways, um, if uh, I am now going to, I will close this window here. I'm going to our library page. Um, then we have the catalog here. And we said before that catalogs are limited to the material types. For example, uh, you can find journals in there, but not um, the articles in journals. So the articles in journals are not indexed in the library catalog. You can find entire books there, including edited books, but you cannot find chapters from the book in there. Now, sometimes a library catalog entry uh, inc uh, includes the table of contents. So you may be lucky and find a chapter in your search in the library catalog, but generally that is not true. Um, and uh, that's why we use other databases. We started talking about Realm. But um, there is another database um, that is called WorldCat, and I very briefly mentioned it in yesterday's uh, video. Uh, WorldCat is actually, and it is uh, accessible via databases under W, uh, WorldCat is a catalog of catalogs. Um, why do we need it? Um, well, it, our library catalog not only is limited with regard to certain types of materials, but also with regard to what our library owns. And if our library does not own a certain item, we will not find it in our library catalog. However, if we connect all the library catalogs there are from all over the world, then we can find things that are published and that is owned by at least one of those libraries. And that database is WorldCat. So WorldCat is a catalog of all the connect libraries all over the world. OK, they are not all, but they are all academic libraries, uh, university libraries, college libraries from North America. Uh, many from Europe and Asia and uh, other parts of the world. So they're not all, but there are several thousand. Um, so now there are two versions here. There's a WorldCat version that is publicly online and that is okay. And once you don't have access, uh, once you graduate, you don't have access to our databases anymore. You can use that. Uh, but the one that we subscribe to under first search um, is is a little bit better to use. And for the purpose of this course, and since you're a student here right now and have access to the subscription of WorldCat on first search, we will use that. So uh, whenever you use WorldCat, please use the one under 
first search. So I'm going in here and it requires your authentication. Your Texas State username and password. Um, and you may notice uh, that it will look similar to some of the other databases that are offered under first search that we will um, get to know very soon. First search is the environment, is the provider of the database, but the particular database we're searching in right now is um, is WorldCat. And you can see that here database we're searching right now in WorldCat. There are a few others that are available uh, in first search, but we're searching in um, WorldCat. So uh, now, like every library catalog, uh, WorldCat is also limited to books, entire CDs, entire LPs, entire journals. Um, so that means that you don't necessarily find something that's in it, um, but at least um, the self-contained publication of a album or a book or a journal you will find in here and for that it is very useful uh, so and because we are connected to all libraries that are connected to WorldCat we can find just about anything that has been published all over the world uh, of course if there are items that no libraries own then we will not find it in here but let's do a sample search um, uh, let me just uh, make up a research topic that relates to music education. Now, WorldCat is not a music specific database, obviously. So whenever we search something for music, it is very important to include the keyword music. Um, so let's say teaching uh, children singing. Um, so this is also very broad. Um, I, uh, there are too many search results. I would have to limit this uh, with regard to my interest, but I wanted to uh, pick something broad, uh, something broad for now. So you will have um, now search results here. And the good thing is you will see a flag that says Texas State University whenever Texas State University owns a particular item. Uh, and if there is one uh, that doesn't have the flag, that means Texas State may not own this item. Now, it could still uh, own this item uh, if, if this item is listed several times in WorldCat, and that can happen frequently. The reason is that a particular item, like this is a book, uh, it's always good to look at material type, uh, or a document type, actually document type, it says this is a book. So it's good to what to look at. So look at document type, but this is a book and different libraries may actually catalog this book differently. So that means, although uh, Texas State wasn't flagged on this, it could possibly be that Texas State owns this item. How would we know? We can search for this title and then we say, your research uh, under research for a title or even better a title phrase uh, but uh, we'll um, talk about the distinction another day probably uh, now you will have this you will see this book listed here several times uh, it's a book children discover music and dance by Emma Sheehy Emma Dickin, uh, Dixon Sheehy um, and now why is it listed several times? Once here it has a subtitle. This one is published in 1959. That was probably the first edition. Uh, maybe this is the second edition from 1968. Here is 1968, but this is actually a computer file, not uh, the book. Um, uh, maybe this is another edition, 1977. But none of these editions have the Texas State flag, so perhaps this book is not owned by Texas State University. Of course, you can, you can and should also go to, if you really need this book, you should also go to the Texas State catalog and search for it. Um, and so you would go to txt.edu. Uh, 
uh, click on libraries and you go to the catalog and search in it uh, to see if it's indeed not owned by the Texas State Library. Um, but I wanted to, I, I opened this as a second window or a second tab here. So I have my record open here um, and I want to go back to the first page. In WorldCat, it always shows uh, how many libraries own this item. And of course, it is this number plus this number plus this number and so on. So it's not uh, this item, but it's how this item is indexed or cataloged, right? So there are actually um, over 800 libraries uh, that own this item, um, but how it is indexed uh, or cataloged um, in like, like this, uh, this particular entry here, uh, is only 487. So uh, WorldCat actually uh, lists this as number one because it is owned by the highest number of libraries. And that is the 1968 publication of this particular book. Um, now, if you click on libraries worldwide, it will actually give you a list of all the libraries that own this item, how it is cataloged. And um, Texas State University is not listed here. Now, if many libraries own it, it only lists the Texas libraries because um, through the authentication, um, WorldCat knows that you are searching from Texas or from Texas State, even if you're physically um, anywhere else in the world. But if you're searching through the Texas State subscription of WorldCat, then it will only list Texas libraries first, but you can also, um, uh, here's a link to display all libraries and then all 300 or however many there were are listed, including the ones in the UK and Zimbabwe and South Africa and New Zealand and so on. But if I go back uh, to the Texas library uh, or the, to the Texas libraries that own this item, you may see it's uh, uh, UT Austin owns this item, okay? Uh, or University of no, UTSA does not own this item. I wanted to, I uh, wanted to look for a library that's close by. Let's say you're living in Austin. I live in Austin, uh, and UT Austin Library would be very convenient for me to get this book. So if our library doesn't own it, you can actually borrow it from UT Austin. Uh, and you can do that by requesting a text share card. So if you go to our library homepage and click on menu uh, and click on services and click on borrow and renew, one item here is text share card. Um, so let me review this. You click on, oh, uh, that went uh, to uh, the Texas State homepage. So from our library page, you click on menu, you click on services, you click on borrow and re uh, re renew. And one is the text share card. And um, so a text share card is basically a library card that entitles you to use other libraries other than uh, Texas State Library, uh, at least those libraries that to participate at text share, which is many. UT is one of them. Uh, you can request a text share card by simply filling out this uh, text share card request form and uh, it will be mailed to you. Normally, um, if you're on campus here, you can walk to the uh, circulation desk in the main library and they issue it to you right away. So if you actually are in San Marcos, uh, that may be the faster way to get the texture card, but you can get it mailed within just a few days. And with that texture card, you walk up to the circulation desk at UT Austin Library or any other library uh, that is near you uh, and you show them this card and with that they will issue you 
their library card, which then entitles you to, uh, to uh, check out uh, their books. So you can actually borrow their books, take them home like you would from the Texas State Library. Um, now, if you just want to use the library inside the library and look at the book inside the library at UT Austin, just grab a book from the shelf, uh, if the book is on the shelf, which many books are, <clears throat> then you don't need a TechShare card and a UT library card. Um, but uh, if you want to borrow or take it out of the library, then you need a TechShare card and then you need a, a UT library card to be issued or UTSA or whatever. So that is one uh, one thing I wanted to say. Another thing is, um, so if you find an item in WorldCat that, um, or any other database that is not owned by Texas State, uh, another way of getting is, is via interlibrary loan. And so if you're on the library homepage, again, you click on menu, you click on services, you click on borrow and renew and um, interlibrary loan is a little uh, a couple links below a text share card so you click on interlibrary loan and this is the interlibrary loan system they are basically uh, if Texas State doesn't own an item you can request that item as an interlibrary loan so the very first time you use it you have to um, fill out fill out the form but it's all free it's part of your uh, you actually pay a library fee and that entitles you to use this um, so once you're in Iliad ILL stands for interlibrary loan uh, you click on your request and there or you hover the mouse over it and there are three forms for journal magazine articles for books or scores or videos and one is for dissertations and theses so let's say this one is a book. We want to find a book um, or order this book that we found on um, on WorldCat. Then you can just copy and paste the necessary information. Uh, so the title, the author, the year, uh, the publisher, and so on. So here in these uh, fields, publisher, place of publication, that is New York, uh, edition, uh, in this case, if it doesn't say first or second or third edition, uh, it's, uh, it would be good to include the year uh, of the edition. But that is only if you uh, really want a particular edition. If it doesn't matter to you, uh, then uh, you can just leave this empty. ISBN is very important. It stands for International Standard Book Number. All books have, a, uh, have one of those and um, usually it is included here in WorldCat but this is not an ISBN and it uh, may be because this book may be published before ISBNs were used. I'm not so sure. This book should have an ISBN, but you can leave this. Um, you can leave this empty. Now let me say something about OCLC number. The OCLC number is <coughs> a WorldCat number uh, that is linked directly to an entry in WorldCat. So if you found this book in WorldCat under so toward the, if you scroll down toward the bottom of this entry where it says accession number, it says OCLC and this number, and you copy that number and paste it in here. Um, that way the librarian who um, will work on your interlibrary loan request uh, can look up information in WorldCat and directly go to this particular entry in WorldCat uh, sometimes when you have some ob obscure items it might be very useful to include that if it is a very common book that is owned by many libraries uh, and is easy to find you may not have to include this but I always include it 
uh, here there is a not wanted date um, after uh, not wanted after date um, now that doesn't mean that you get the book um, any slower if you uh, say instead of June I want to say July or so but whatever date you list here if they cannot get this book by that date they will cancel your request and if you're still here on campus in the fall and you still want this uh, then you definitely want to include further date uh, but they will still try to get it as soon as possible now with the COVID-19 situation I actually had uh, once a book rec uh, book request uh, rejected because of that um, saying that they cannot get it here because of COVID-19 but the library will purchase it and so then the library purchased it it just took a little longer um, now if the book is not in English you should definitely say yes to this question will you accept the item in a language other than English um, will you accept an alternate edition of this item you can say yes or no uh, no only if you want a very particular edition where did you find this item you found it in realm you don't have to put any notes you can say oh not a realm this is worldcat um, if you found it in realm you can list that you found it in realm uh, but this one we found in worldcat um, i usually don't put anything on uh, any of these but this is basically where you found this book listed let's say you found this book listed in the bibliography of another uh, publication then you can include that here um, but uh, I usually uh, look up the books that I want in WorldCat and just refer to WorldCat and then you submit the request now I will not submit the request because I don't want this particular item but I wanted to point out that if you order a book uh, you will get the physical copy shipped to Texas State and you can pick it up here so if you're not here physically right now that might not be a good option but if you order journal and magazine articles you will get it electronically regardless of where you are uh, you will receive this item in your Iliad account here under electronically received items I don't have one right now but it would be here and there would be a link to a PDF file you can download it and then you have it so that is if you order a journal or a magazine article you will get it electronically and usually it just takes a few days uh, to get so maybe a week uh, so this is definitely an option even during this course um, during the month of June Anyway, so you fill uh, then out the title of the journal, the volume number, issue number, the month of publication, if there is one, if there is none, just leave it blank, the year, inclusive page numbers from two. Sometimes they're difficult to get in some cases. Uh, then you can say here, I know one page number, the starting page number, and you can write in parentheses, I don't know the ending page number or so but if possible inclusive page numbers if you have include an international standard serial number it means uh, the journal uh, has this number um, and you would find that number in WorldCat so let me actually uh, find an article uh, no a publication uh, in WorldCat, no, I cannot find it in WorldCat because WorldCat's, uh, WorldCat does not contain any um, articles inside the journal. I would have to look this up in a realm. Uh, but if you uh, then have the journal title, for, ex uh, for example, yesterday we had the journal Psychomusicology. Um, if that is the journal then you can look up the journal and this journal has a standard number an ISSN number um, so there are several ones and if you're not sure uh, copy and paste them all uh, or just use the one uh, use the first one the OCLC number under the journal name uh, again here but for journals I usually leave it open because there are more options for the librarian to find it 
um, now so this was for the journal and then it says the article author and the article title um, and then again the not wanted date the language preference where did you find this so if you find it in realm um, then you list realm here or music index we'll talk about that soon and then you hit submit the request and you will get the item electronically so it will actually um, receive an email at some point saying uh, we received your request and you can now uh, log on to Iliad and download your PDF file so um, in short um, uh, when you don't find uh, when you find items that our library doesn't own you have two options one is to get a texture card and go to a different library that owns that item uh, and WorldCat will tell you uh, which um, other libraries own that item like this journal is owned by quite a few libraries within Texas including UT Austin also UT San Antonio uh, University of Houston uh, so all the major cities actually have this item so you could just uh, probably you don't even need a texture card for this you can just walk in uh, pull the journal if it's on the shelf uh, and then make a copy of it if the item is not on the shelf and you would only find that out if you search in that library's catalog if it's not on the shelf you do need the texture card uh, if you want to um, actually uh, then you have to request that journal uh, but the alternative might be much better that is using um, interlibrary loan okay so I talked about interlibrary loan I talked about texture card um, and I want to remind you let me see how long this video is so far so it's almost my my self-imposed limit of uh, roughly 30 minutes I don't want to exceed that but I wanted to uh, uh, show you uh, remind you that uh, realm as a database uh, does not always have complete information uh, of uh, that is needed to list to list an item in the bibliography uh, so so if I find something in realm and let's say it is a chapter in an edited book as we had an example yesterday but a different example um, so I uh, just randomly chose something again you want to scroll down oh, uh, in the realm it is up um, you want to look at the document type this is an article in a collection of essays collection of essays means it's a book um, that means a book that has editors and inside the book are many chapters by different authors now this particular article is written by two authors so this chapter is written by two authors in this book called music and child development and as you can see it does not list the editors names but it does list New York and Springer which is the publisher uh, it lists the inclusive page numbers but there is one thing that is missing here that is the editors names so if you wanted to list this particular item in a bibliography then this site function will be incomplete will have incomplete information um, it, it has the authors of the article it has the year it has the title of the article it has the title of the book it has the page numbers and the location and the publisher if you use uh, Chicago if you use APA then it doesn't list the city of the uh, publisher uh, just the publisher itself but it does not it has omitted the editors names because the record doesn't contain it 
But if you were to list this item just like this in your bibliography, it is wrong. It is incomplete. And so you have to look up this book. Yesterday I suggested you can look up the entire book in Realm, but since we now covered um, WorldCat, it is much better practice to actually look up an entire book in WorldCat. So we're looking for a book called Music and Child Development from 1987. So again, if I open another window, go to databases, go to WorldCat, uh, scroll down, I will take the version on first search, um, and I paste this in here. I say, this is a title, and uh, the book is published in 1987, and search in WorldCat, then I find that book, Music and Child Development. And um, in fact, it's owned by Texas State University. If I go in here, then you will see names listed here. In most of the cases, those are the either authors or editors, but sometimes other people will talk about this another day. You should scroll down and look at responsibility. And uh, for sure, it says here, this book is edited by these three people and you can just copy and paste that to uh, complete your bibliographic reference um, uh, in this particular case. Okay, I will continue here uh, tomorrow with, with more on this and you will very soon have more exercises to actually uh, correct uh, bibliographic uh, entries. Uh, your real task for today is to study the article Musicology and Grow of Music Online, which you find in Oxford Music Online, just like the music article you already read. So take study notes. How extensive uh, is up to you. It's a very long article. You may not want to take too detailed notes, just uh, relatively general notes. Uh, you could submit your notes to me via email once you have them, but you have another day. You also have day four. So since this is a very long article and it may take several hours to read and take notes on, you have today and tomorrow uh, to actually con uh, conclude this or in complete this assignment. It's a very important assignment because musicology deals with music research. This is a music research methods course. And even if you're not studying musicology, um, this is very important to find information about music. This will help you uh, to get a better understanding um, for your music history courses, for other, for music theory courses, of course, uh, and so on. So um, it's a very important article. Okay, anyways, email me if you have any questions and um, Otherwise, uh, have fun reading the musicology article and have a wonderful day. Bye.